Welcome to our Intergenerational Jazz Power Jam. I'm Eli Yeaman, hosting from our production studio for our jam creativity, community, and connection. In collaboration with the National Jazz Museum in Harlem and Jazz Corner, on creativity, community, and connection, our May 2021 Intergenerational Jazz Power Jam is produced by Jazz Power Initiative the uptown New York City-based nonprofit organization transforming lives through jazz, arts, education, and community programs. Our featured guests today are prolific bassist and band leader, Lonnie Plaxico. Lonnie moved to New York in 1981 and soon began working as the bassist in, with Wynton Marsalis, then Dexter Gordon, and then Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers, whom he recorded 13 albums as a member of the band. He was the bassist, he is the bassist, and music director for vocalist Cassandra Wilson, and has been for many years, including her Grammy award-winning release, New Moon Daughter, and Grammy award-winning release, Lovely. He also has 13 albums as a leader, and his latest record is Ancestral Devotion. Welcome, Lonnie. So glad to have you with us. Glad to be here. All right. All right. And over on the saxophone is Mr. John Arabagon. John is also a Chicago native. He's the winner of the 2008 Thelonious Monk Intergen International Saxophone Competition, the 2012 Musician of the Year in the New York City Jazz Record, 2014 Philippine Presidential Award, and he's recorded, by my count, 134 albums as a sideman, 12 as a co-leader, and 13 as leader for his label, Arabagast Records. So glad you could join us, John. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Eli. Yeah, man. What are we going to play first? Uh, we're going to start out with a, an original tune of mine uh, called Greebles. Cool. Thank you. 
Dribbles. Dribbles. What does that mean, John? Dribbles. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, at the time that I wrote this, I was really into reading the complete works of one of my favorite authors, uh, David Foster Wallace. Oh. And at a certain point in the middle of his grand novel, Infinite Jest, he starts talking about greebles. And <laughs> it turns out it's like lint in, like lint from your like pockets that's like left over. And so I just thought it was really hilarious and interesting. So I was like, oh, I got to write a tune called Greebles. Wow, wow, <laughs> wow, wow. So I wanted to ask you about that creativity mm -hmm. because you have this incredible uh, creative output going, all these records that you've done um, and that you've been creating three or four records just in the past year. You've got three or four coming down the road. How do you keep that kind of creative flow going, especially in the time that we're in now, this pandemic. How, how have you been managing just by like reaching into your pockets and say, I got empty pockets. I'm going to write a song about that. I mean, <laughs> where, how do you keep that flow going, man? Yeah, I don't, you've got to, yeah, for me, uh, being involved in music, transcribing some of my favorite tunes, writing originals, trying to get better on my saxophone, all of this stuff um, kept, keeps me sane during this crazy time. Yeah. Uh, it's therapeutic. It's um, it reminds me about the beauty of the world that's out there, even though we're stuck at home, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, music is super important to me, and continuously being a part of it, uh, along with hanging out with my family and my kid, is like the the biggest pleasures I get out of life. So, mm -hmm. um, and luckily, I've met a lot of people like you guys that I can collaborate with, and I can bounce ideas off of and gain new insights and different philosophies on different things in music and outside of music with some collaborators. So it's just, um, it's a ne never ending well of inspiration, this, this, this music life thing. Mm. You know, I notice you're, um, you've got this saxophone trio project, the cat of sadness. <laughs> some really interesting and some microtonal things you're doing with two other, so it's you on soprano sax, two other soprano sax. Phone, yeah. Right? Uh, some of my really great friends, uh, Dan Blake and Ingrid Laubrock. Uh, we all play soprano, and um, Dan is particularly fascinating on that instrument. He's really pushing it in some really crazy directions. So we just... Thought it'd be, you know, it's something fun to try. Like, who's put out a three soprano saxophone only album before, right? Mm -hmm. So we thought we would we would try to come up with some original compositions for it. We would just we would play, we'd get together and rehearse and play, and see what came out of it. And the result is this album, The Cat of Sadness. Amazing, and awesome. It's it's just one one direction of of trying to find new ways to express ourselves. No, it's not. It sounds nothing like One Direction. <laughs> Believe me, my daughter's got me immersed in one direction. It doesn't sound <laughs> like that at all. But now you have this other project with uh, Silva Riflet. Did I say that right? Yeah, Sylvan Riflet. Sylvan Riflet. Rebellions, uh, writing music inspired by and interwoven with speeches by provocative leaders of today and the past, including Greta Thunberg, Emma Gonzalez, and Paul Robeson. That sound, that's a, I've been listening to that one. That's a fascinating project. Too. Yeah, uh, Sylvan and I have been friends for 20 years. He's, he lives in Paris, and he has tons of projects um, himself. But we did a, a Moondog... Uh, re, we, we reworked some Moondog compositions um, back in 2013, I think. And we toured that project, and we had such a great time that we were like, let's do another thing, a collaboration where... This time we write the music, and we had this idea of celebrating like um, some cutting edge voices of the day and and celebrating some speeches that uh, really meant something to us now so what, what's one of the speeches that that really stands out to you, and maybe you could play us like a little music thing that came out of it i'd be very interested yeah in uh, I wrote a tune called "The Adults in the Room." Uh, dedicated to Emma Gonzalez, who was mm. one of the students who became really vocal after the Parkland High School shootings mm -hmm. a couple, couple years ago. Mm -hmm. And so she had this really powerful speech that moves many people to tears when they heard this. And she 
was calling out the gun lobby and calling out certain politicians that weren't enacting anything as mass shootings escalated in this country and still do. Um, so the speech like culminated in her saying, we call BS over and over again. We call BS, we call BS. And, and, and the crowd got way into it and it was really emotional. So I, yeah, I took that speech and because we were doing seven or eight songs, we wanted to, we didn't want to just uh, play exactly what the speeches were saying for all the tunes. We did that for one, two, one or two tunes. We, we tried to come up with different ways to approach incorporating speeches into um, each song. So if you listen to the album Rebellions, you're going to hear these different methods. But this particular song, The Adults in the Room, I wanted to, to use that we call BS. We call. So uh, let's see. I've got this bass line that comes from we call BS. And then we have Jim Black on drums, who, who is a singular, amazing player. Um, so I had this idea for we call B, BS, and, and Jim fills around in his spectacular Jim Black way. And so that goes around and around. But the, and then the, the melody line that starts the piece, uh, it stems from the We Call BS. It stems from the, escalate, the elevating uh, intonation in her voice from when she was doing that. So it, so it goes like, while the bass is going over and over again, and Jim is, is soloing the melody. And it goes on and on from there, and it develops from there. It's, so it's like the energy of Emma Gonzalez's yes. words just kind yes. of coming at you. One yeah, more time. I was looking at yeah. it rhythmically, but also yeah. going for the spirit of her really being enraged at that awesome. point. So awesome. that's just a small example. Well, One little microcosm of that record. It's so wonderful to see jazz musicians today taking the things that are happening today and bringing our music and our tools to those to tell those stories. Yeah, I mean, it, jazz is a, it's a living, it's a living, breathing music. And so yes. Yes. Uh, we got to incorporate all the modern things that are happening. Absolutely. So what's this next song we're going to do? The Music Box? Yeah, uh, this next song is called The Music Box Song, and I wrote it, there was a certain period where I was on tour all the time. I, I would come home for a couple of days and leave again for a couple of weeks and come back, and so I wrote this tune for my wife, who, who plays a little piano, She's like, she took some piano lessons when she was young, so I wrote this tune with like, really, like everything was written out, like left hand, right hand, and everything. But the tune that I came up with, I, I liked it so much that I adapted, I adapted it for my own bands. All right. Music box song for When We're Apart. One, two, three, one, two. <laughs>
Beautiful song by John Arabagon called Home. Intergenerational Jazz Power Jam, produced by Jazz Power Initiative, the uptown New York City based nonprofit organization transforming lives through jazz arts education and community programs like this one. And uh, we're in collaboration with the National Jazz Museum in Harlem and Jazz Corner, and we thank you to our collaborators. Uh, you're watching on creativity, community, and connection 
our May Intergenerational Jazz Power Jam. And you can learn more about this program and our youth programs and all the different things we're doing at Jazz Power Initiative on our website, jazzpower.org. Well, our basis today is the wonderful Lonnie Plaxico. And um, Lonnie, you have been working with an incredible range of talented musicians uh, and temperaments, I might say, uh, from Art Blakey uh, to Dizzy Gillespie to Jack DeJanette to Cassandra Wilson, Alice Coltrane, to us playing together a couple weeks ago for Jazzmobile with Bobby Sanabria and a Latin jazz aggregation, which was a gas. How do you maintain such an open mind collaborating with all these wonderful different artists in such a wide variety of situations? Um, when I first band I got with um, when I was a teenager, 14, in Chicago, all the old musicians, um, um, we had to play all kind of music. Mm. So um, I was started off with R&B music and um, the blues and um, everything. I mean, it, you had to play everything. It was like, you know, it was not just one thing. It was just music. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that stays with me. I, I like all kind of music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever happened, do you ever find yourself in a situation where it's like, I mean, that phases you? Because I've never seen you phased. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all music. I mean, you know. <laughs> you know. That's beautiful, it's, it's, man. Every, I mean, it's that's one universal thing that we do have is music, mm -hmm. you know, and um, like language, you know, you go to another country, you probably won't know that language, but the musicians that they get together, they, they can still play together. Sure, sure. It transcends, right. it transcends any language barriers or right. anything like that. Beautiful. And John, you've been working with a bunch of different groups, uh, Dave Douglas, uh, uh, who I met years ago, and and um, uh, Mary Halverson, Quintet, uh, mostly other people do the killing. Um, what makes musical collaborations important to you? Yeah, I mean, the personalities that you run across, it, it spans the gamut for sure, um, but when you meet some kindred souls who are into collaborating, but also bring their own imagination and their, and their own philosophies to the table. That's where I keep coming back for more. And I'm like, let's, let's start a band. Let's play together. Let's write together. Because I want those different voices and I want those opinions, those informed opinions. Um, I want them in my music and I want them in my life. Like all, in and out of music too, so... Uh, some of the most fascinating people and wonderful people I've met in my entire life have been through music. That's beautiful. It's the community, really, right? It's the community, the connection that we get through this music is one of the most beautiful um, rewards. Okay. It's starting to feel like jazz. Yeah. We're going to do a song now, uh, collaborative. Um, we just create something here on... Um, and that's the train going by the way, because we're up here in the Jazz Power Studio where the train goes by every three minutes. It's a great inspiration. And we're gonna do all the things you are um, for this day right now with John Arabagon, Lonnie Plaxico. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
We are grateful to receive support for our community programs from the New York City Council and City Council member Idanis Rodriguez, who's been a great supporter of Jazz Power Initiative, the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, the New York State Council on the Arts, the Upper Manhattan Empowerment Zone, the Lower Manhattan Cultural Council, the Hispanic Federation, the Miranda Family Fund, and individual supporters like you. Thank you for helping us keep the jazz power on. And you can sign up now for our very first Jazz and Talk Power Walk fundraiser coming up on Saturday, June 26, 2021. Let us direct your feet to the sunny side of the street with our summer walkathon to benefit our youth education and community programs. Visit jazzpower.org to sign up or it's in the chat link. And you can get now your limited edition Jazz Power Summer T-shirt along with a $150 donation to support our programs just like this one. So now it's time to jam and connect with friends far and wide sharing their talents with us on Intergenerational Jazz Power Jam on creativity, community, and connection. directors of the Jazz Power Initiative. I love how Jazz Power Initiative introduces young people to jazz and teaches music and dance and performance skills to young people. And it's not age limited. You can keep learning jazz all your life. So I invite you to get to know and support Jazz Power Initiative. And thank you. Never 
sweet potato pie And I'm sitting mighty pretty Sleep by the stars Chase that old moon Fall in the bed Humming a tune It's crazy But I'm in love, 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 love It's crazy But I'm in love sweet potato pie and I'm sitting mighty pretty asleep by the stars chase that old moon fall in the bed humming a tune it's crazy but I'm in love 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 it's crazy but I'm in love it's crazy but I'm in Thank you, everyone, who participated in the Intergenerational Jazz Power Jam, and special thanks to our featured artists today, Lonnie Plaxico on bass and John Arabagon on the saxophone. If you would like to learn more about our Jazz Power Youth Education and Community Programs, please visit our website, jazzpower.org. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and join our mailing list and social media. Let's stay in touch, all right? Remember, you can also sign up for our first ever Jazz and Talk Power Walk. It's coming up on Saturday, June 26th, 2021, to benefit our youth education and community programs. You can participate right from where you are, all right? Wherever you are in the world, sign up in the link in the chat or at jazzpower.org slash June 26th. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, we are looking forward to seeing you on July 16th at Marcus Garvey Park in Harlem for our Intergenerational Jazz Power Jam at Jazz Mobile's annual Summerfest. And that'll be the next time we're together like this. So I hope you can join us then. Many thanks to you and to all the supporters of Intergenerational Jazz Power Jam. That includes the Upper Manhattan Empowerment Zone, the Lower Manhattan Cultural Council, the Hispanic Federation, the Miranda Family Fund, the New York State Council on the Arts, Governor Andrew Cuomo, and the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, Mayor Bill de Blasio, and individual supporters like you. Now, we're going to say goodbye right now, and we're going to play some blues. And a good friend of ours in the blues passed just recently, Mr. Bob Porter of WBGO, and the producer for many years, of Portraits in Blue, which I had the good fortune to produce with Bob Porter for eight years, and I learned a lot about the blues. So we want to dedicate this next song to Mr. Bob Porter. And uh, like he always used to say on Portraits in Blue, we'll catch you the next time. One, two, a <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. 